What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here today. We are going to do a little bit of a project here. We're gonna upgrade an 8-bit do arcade stick. So this is gonna be a fun project. This is something that I've been looking forward to for quite a while, and it's taken a long time for all the parts to come in. It's an easy upgrade. Uh, mostly the tools you're gonna need are a screwdriver, a T10 Torx driver, and that's kind of a weird thing that you're gonna need just to get into the case of the arcade stick. And then a couple of smaller tools that you may or may not need depending on which upgrades you decide to do. Uh, I'll be using a set of needle nose pliers and flush cutters. Uh, but for the most part, you'll need like a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a T10 Torx driver to get inside this particular arcade stick. If you're doing a different arcade stick, you probably won't even need that T10 Torx driver. For the purpose of this video, if you're confused about anything or you don't know where to get anything or you just want to see the specs on it, I'm going to put links to just about everything we are covering here. Some are going to be Amazon Associate links. Some of them aren't going to be because they're sold on more specialty arcade shops. And I'll, I'll try and link just about everything we're going to do here. So we are going to change out this arcade stick, the actual lever itself. This is probably the biggest complaint I have with this 8-bit do arcade stick in general is that this is just a little bit loose, a little bit floppy. The clicks aren't as satisfying as you might expect from a good joystick. And at the price point that this thing came out at, this 8-Bit Duke arcade stick is actually really nice. You know, it's, it's not that expensive as far as arcade stick goes. It's wireless. It works with PC, with Switch, with basically anything that'll take an X input. So I use it on my Mister a lot. Um, and it's been really great for that. And that's why I want to keep this. I want to keep this as an arcade stick, not necessarily a fighter stick. Um, but here's what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to replace is the lever itself, the joystick part of the arcade stick. And we're going to replace it with this drop-in replacement. So no modifications are going to be needed to the case. Uh, just screw the old one out, screw the new one in. Easy peasy. This is a Sanwa Denshi JLF. And uh, it's, it's kind of the standard, right? Like it's an arcade quality part. You should expect years of service out of this. It's very satisfying to move. The clicks are very satisfying. Uh, and it's gonna basically be a drop-in replacement. Uh, we did have to order a special cable for this. You can see I've got a bag of parts here. Uh, and that's because the inside of this, you'll see why later, uh, we did need to buy this special adapter cable, which we did have to modify. And that's why we need these uh, cutters here. Uh, next, buttons. Now, obviously, you can see that the buttons on here aren't all normal or aren't all stock. The buttons that come with this are normally just fine. There's not much of a need to replace them. Uh, but, you know, I figured while I was getting inside of this thing, while I was customizing it, I might as well, you know, play with that as well. So... What I've gone ahead and done is ordered a bunch of different types of buttons, and you can see those buttons here. It's hard to see them because they're all red, uh, but these four over here are the stock arcade stick buttons, the, the stock 8-bit do, as well as this one here. This one down here isn't Sanwa, it's actually a Samitsu button. This is a standard Sanwa Denshi OBSEFE button. And this is an OBSFE silent button. So this is their generation two silent button. They also made a generation one silent button that used these little pads that go inside the stick. I think I've got a few here. Uh, they're basically just foam pads that go inside the buttons. Oh, here they are, I already took them out. Let's see if I can get them on here. These are just foam pads. They go inside the buttons and they just silence the tapping. So this is one of them installed. So here's a standard button. And here's one with the pad. It does what it says on the box. It's much quieter. The only problem with it is that pad restricts the movement. It's somehow not as satisfying to click. Um, but if you are trying to be considerate of your neighbors or your family members in the same house as you, silence could be a big deal because these things can get loud when you're playing some games. Uh, the white button here is an OBSFE silent button, and this actually does it differently. It's shaped right like a regular Sanwa button for the most part, but it actually uses softer plastic. So can, this is a regular San, Sanwa button, and this is a silent button. It 
it's a big difference. It's a big difference. Uh, feel wise, you can feel that it's softer on your fingertips as well. Um, but it also is a little bit grabbier because it's made out of softer material. You know, it feels a little bit grabbier on your fingers. So if you're doing, you know, something like this, it sticks to the tips of your fingers a little bit. Maybe it's going to bother you. Maybe it's not. Uh, but it's a nice option. It's definitely a lot quieter than the standard Sen Senwa button. Uh, the Sumitsu button, I didn't love. Uh, so what I've decided to do is go all Sanwa. And because I'm actually doing another joystick on top of this, I decided to do standard Sanwa joystick buttons or Sanwa buttons, the OBS FE, because uh, I like the colors that they come in and I like the feel of them. And I, I like that slap. I like it. Bang, bang, bang. I like it. Uh, the silent buttons are going to be great if you want to, you know, be nice to your your housemates or your neighbors. Uh, but so that that's an explanation of the buttons I'm using. I'll be using just standard Sanwa buttons for this. So. Why don't we crack this thing open and get started? I'm actually really excited to do this because I've been waiting for these parts for so long. So the first thing is we're gonna flip it over. I'm gonna use this piece of foam here to kind of protect the joystick while we're doing this. Uh, any piece of foam will do, you can use a rag. You just wanna do something so you're not scratching it all up. And this is where your T10 is going to come in handy, the T10 Torx driver. Uh, and for the purpose of this, purposes of this video, I've already removed these because I've been in and out of this quite a bit, but there's just six that you have to remove. And once you remove them, maybe you want to just put them in a bag for a little bit so you know where they are, so you don't lose them because, you know, for the next couple of days, you might be in and out of here quite a bit. Uh, but once you've got those out, and remember, you're just screwing into plastic, so you, you don't, when you screw them back in, you want to be somewhat careful. You don't want to torque these things down. You're just gonna grab it with your fingernails and pull it off. And you can see that there's a cable connected. Uh, this actually goes between the arcade stick and the USB port on the bottom of it. Uh, and we're just gonna unplug that. Pull on the plastic, not on the cable. And then we can put that aside for now. And now we see the inside of the joystick. So the first thing you might notice is that the new joystick doesn't look like the old joystick exactly. Uh, one of the main differences is obviously that this connector is not on the old joystick. So that's why we ordered this cable. And I'll put a link to this cable in the description of this video so that you can easily get a replacement for it. Uh, but this is, you know, a very cheap thing. So the, the cost has been, I think it was, I think I got five for, you know, just not much money. <laughs> um, so that's why we need this cable is to plug into the joystick, the new joystick and then this will plug into this circuit board here. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that this new cable doesn't seem to have a place to plug in. Well, it does. Um, the, the way they 8 do wired this up is they used eight pins, uh, basically a ground and a signal for each one of the directions. But you can just combine all of the grounds into one. So that's why we have a five pin connector. And that will go into this eight pin connector slot. Uh, with just a little modification to the tape cable. Basically, we're just going to snip off uh, one of the guides, which is why we got the uh, flush cutters. So let's first get rid of this zip tie. When you get rid of this zip tie, be careful not to cut any of the cables. I'm just going to get rid of that to get it out of our way. And we'll just separate these cables so we know where we're at. We're going to pull this harness off of the board. Very easy. Now let's just get this joystick right out of here. Let's change the bit on our driver.
right, I forgot to take the ball off of my joystick. So to do that, you're just gonna put a flathead uh, screwdriver to the bottom of the joystick. You can see the slot right here. And then from the other side, you're going to hold that screwdriver in place and then twist the ball. Let's see if we can get this. This is always a little weird. There we go. And then twist the ball to loosen it and you can just roll the ball right off with your fingers. Now, when that comes off, you'll see that there's a sleeve here to protect the actual metal of the joystick, a dust cap, and the ball itself. So put those aside. If you're gonna reuse the ball, put that aside as well as the dust cover and the protector. And then you can slide that right out. We're basically done with this part. The JLF is a direct replacement. When you put it in place, you can see it lines up perfectly with these little brass uh, nuts. And you wanna put those the, the connector so it's pointing toward the buttons. Uh, so that's correct side up. Before we do that though, on our particular install, we're actually gonna be installing what's called a Freak Mod. And this is a really cool little guy, if I can find it. Oh, it's over here. So this is the link. And what this does is it replaces the actual lever of the joystick with a quick disconnect which is really convenient if you plan on traveling or storing the joystick or the arcade stick in a small pace. Basically, you just pull up on this and it connects, it, it disconnects the lever into two small pieces, which is really a cool feature. So we're gonna install that into our joystick real quick. And that is a really easy thing to do. We just need a very small screwdriver and there's a small uh, little C-clip here that we're gonna remove with that screwdriver. Now, the contents of this whole thing are under pressure. There's a spring inside of here. So when we remove this, we're gonna put our thumb next to it so that it doesn't go flying somewhere. Because if we lose this, we're gonna be ordering another one and be waiting a long time. So we don't wanna lose this. Uh, so we're going to be real careful when we remove it. But it's super easy to remove. Just kinda pry it out with a very small screwdriver. Put it aside somewhere where you won't lose it and keep your thumb here because all this stuff, it is sprung, it's under pressure. So this is the actuator. That's the spring there, you can see. I'll take that out and then we should be able to just remove the joystick. You can just hold it all together with your thumb and your forefinger. Put the new joystick in. go we'll put the spring back in if you want to replace the spring with a heavier spring this is the time to do it as well put the actuator back in all right now we got to replace that little clip so we're going to hold that down with our thumb i use my thumbnail there and put the c-clip back in place once we got it on there we're just going to squeeze it on with our needle nose pliers should clip in easily if it's not probably got it in the wrong place but there we go all right now we have a removable stick on our sanwa just pull it up put it back in easy peasy very cool mod very cool especially if you want to uh travel with the joystick or if you want to uh, store it in like a slim container. So let's get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. Oh, one thing to change the ball on this now, you don't have to open up the joystick anymore either. You just use this Allen key in the quick release part uh, to twist it, which is kind of a nice feature as well. If you like to change your your ball or your, you know, whatever, if you want to change the color of your ball or whatever, uh, often it's a really convenient way to do it. All right, so we're going to get rid of that. And now let's install our joystick. Let's get a piece of foam back. I lost my previous piece of foam, so I'm gonna use this new blue piece of foam, which is new and improved. There we go. Just slot that right in place. And we're gonna screw it down using the original screws. I'm really excited about this. this I'll tell you, um, 
with the current situation in the world, shipping takes forever right now. And uh, I've been waiting for some of these parts for, it feels like weeks. It has been weeks, honestly. So I'm really excited to uh, get this going. I'm also, the, the end goal for this is to be more of an arcade style joystick. Um, so I do have an octagonal gate coming as well. You can see the, the Sanwa comes with a square gate here. Which I think ultimately is better for games like Street Fighter or something like that. But for arcade games, I don't know. I grew up with an octagonal gate in the arcade. Uh, and because I use this with the Mister so much, I think what I'm going to do is actually just change this out to be an octagonal gate. It's really easy. You just release these four clips. Uh, and this clear piece comes right off and you just snap on uh, a different gate. It's very easy to do. Uh, most stuff with, <laughs> with uh, modding these arcade sticks is super easy. Uh, it really doesn't take a lot of skill or time. Uh, the most time you might have, it does cost a lot of money though. Like you, you can quickly get into uh, hundreds of dollars worth of new buttons, new sticks, uh, if you allow yourself to go down that road. So I, if if you're doing this, if you're thinking about doing this, and you're like, oh, I don't know the difference between Sanwa buttons, Sanshi San 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 buttons, or Sumitsu buttons, or whatever. <laughs> Um, just order like kind of a one of each button and check it out. See if you like it, you know, I didn't end up liking the Sumitsu buttons too much. Also, they didn't fit really well in this stick. Uh, one thing you can see in this stick is you see all these circuit boards, get this on camera correctly here. See how close those circuit boards are to the buttons themselves. Um, you cannot use a screw type connector. They have to be snap in buttons on this joystick. Um, and on this one, this is the Sumitsu button here. Uh, this one didn't, the clip ins didn't reach all the way. So you can actually kind of pop that out. Uh, whereas these ones, if you push down on, they won't pop out. So this was, this Sumitsu button didn't really fit. This is a low profile Sumitsu button. Um, I don't know. Anyhow, let's finish getting this joystick in here. Before I get too distracted. All right, we'll snug those up. These are, there are metal nuts inside this plastic, but you're still connecting essentially to plastic. So you don't want to snug them up too much. Just get them in there so it's nice and tight. Uh, and now we're going to take our cable. I'm going to actually grab a brand new one because I've already modified that cable. This is the one thing you'll need to modify to work with this. Now, if you look at this, there are soldering points here. Uh, and you can solder directly to that. So you can get the standard cable that comes with the stick. I'm sure I have one around here. The standard cable that comes with the stick here uh, does have the correct uh, connector for the the joystick uh, and does have solderable cable. So you can just solder these right to those soldering points. Or you can just get a bunch of these cables, five pin connectors, and you can see it plugs directly into the joystick. And then if you look at the actual connector here, the eight pin connector, there are two cutouts. Let's see if you can see that on this camera. So you see those two cutouts there, one there and one uh, right there. So they don't line up with the five pin cable, obviously. And you can just jam this in there and it'll kind of flex out the connector a little bit, but that's not gonna work for us. We wanna actually just trim this off of this cable. You can definitely make this work. You can just jam this in there. It's going to work fine. It's probably going to stay in there fine forever. And you're probably never going to replace this anyway. So who cares? But for the purposes of the video, we're going to pull this off of the joystick. And we're going to just modify this cable ever so slightly to make it fit in there really nice. And to do that, we're going to use our flush cutters. And we're just going to cut this right off. So just not in our way anymore. And having flush, flush, or 
Sharp flush cutters really helps, but as you can see, that's gone now. And now our cable is gonna fit perfectly. So we're gonna stick it back on the we're gonna stick it back on the joystick. And now we can stick it into the connector without flexing that at all. Look how sweet that looks. Right? Perfect. Easy peasy. All right, so that pretty much sets up our joystick. We'll, we'll do a little bit more once we close it up and put our ball top on. Uh, but now we're gonna switch out these buttons and man, this couldn't be an easier process. So essentially, here's what we're looking at. If you look at the buttons themselves, uh, you've got these two tabs, one on each side, and you want to just squeeze these together and push, well, I guess you'd push it this way, and, and push the button right out. Obviously, you got to take off these little connectors uh, that are on here, uh, but that's really easy to do. You just pull them out. If you're having trouble pulling them out, uh, use a small screwdriver to just pry them up uh, gently uh, along the way. I'm going to do one button at a time because it makes it easier to keep track of the wiring that way. So we're gonna start with this one here. And we'll just prime up. Just try and pull on the metal, not on the cable. Um, it's kind of hard to grip it because of these uh, little rubber connectors. And when you're pushing these tabs in, be careful. They're super easy to break. Um, so if you ever plan on putting this joystick back to factory, if you ever wanna use these buttons for anything else, uh, just be real careful. Don't push them any harder than you have to. Uh, we're just going to push it in just a little bit. Push it in just a little bit. And it's out. And now we have a perfectly good button. And I've gone with blue buttons here. And uh, you can see, let's see here. You can see in the plastic here. There are cutouts that are just a hair lower, and that's where you want the clips for your buttons to go. So when you put them in, just make sure those clips line up. Uh, for some reason, the 8-bit do buttons are, the pins, the connectors are at like a 90 degree angle, but that shouldn't affect us here much at all. So we're just gonna get that cable out of our way and slide this in. You'll hear it click into place. We're going to put our buttons back on. One is the ground. And just, you can kind of hear it click into place when it does. One is the actual signal. There we go. Get that on there. Nice and snug. Doesn't matter which side you go with. see nice installed button I love that blue if you want to keep the red uh, I do have a few buttons here uh, let me see I have a Sanwa Vermilion okay so here are the buttons we've got and hopefully we can pick enough color up here uh, so that you can see the difference I'm gonna show you on both cameras so you can get the difference this is an original button this is the buttons they come with uh, this is the Samitsu button. Uh, it's a pretty close match. This is a Sanwa Vermilion button. I think it's pretty close to the 8-bit do button. Uh, and this is a Sanwa Red button. So the Sanwa Red and the Sanwa Vermilion, I think are both pretty good matches if you want to keep it red. I think the Sanwa Red looks more like NES stuff. I think the Sandworm Vermilion looks more like the stuff they put in there. Uh, and we're gonna, I'll do it with this camera too. It's really hard to pick up. These are pretty small differences, but here you go. This is, doing this in reverse here. This is Sandworm Red. These are the 8-bit do colors they come with. And this is the Sandworm Vermilion. I don't know, on that camera, it looks a little more orange. Um, but I think the Sandworm Red, this one here, looks the most like 8-bit Dewey or the most NES. Kind of the best looking one in my opinion. Uh, but I ordered all the colors just to try and figure out which is the best. But I'm switching it out to blue anyway. So that's really just for your benefit. If you care. If you want to make it look as close to stock as you can. Alright. I'm just going to 
start doing more buttons here. These are on there tight. You do have to use a little bit of force and you really want to try and make sure that you're holding the metal and not pulling on the wire. All right, and we'll just pop this out again. There we go. Put that off to the side. Grab a new button. Pop it in. You'll kind of feel these cables slide into place. They definitely lock in, kind of. You'll feel them lock in to where they need to be. All right, we'll go on to the middle buttons here. I'm gonna try and keep the other ones away so I don't accidentally tug on them if I don't need to. There we go. Yeah, I'll tell you, the soundproof padding is the best because it allows the buttons to just drop right out, but it also supports the arcade stick. I didn't, I didn't plan it to be this good. <laughs> I just needed a piece of foam to keep the joystick off of the ground. But it ends up being kind of the perfect tool for this. All right, let's put this one in. And I am I'm supporting the button a little bit when I'm pushing these in because it does... Doesn't want to pull the, uh, or it doesn't want to push the micro switch kind of out when you're pushing on the back. There we go. Where'd the other one go? You can go with all sorts of colors too. You don't have to do all one color. You know, you can do like a Neo Geo theme with the. The red, the yellow, the green, and the blue, which I think is kind of neat. Do a Street Fighter theme with, uh, I don't know if that was just an American Street Fighter thing. They used to use the hat buttons. Um, but that was uh, red, white, and blue, which is kind of fun. Have an American theme. You can try and just, you know, go with standard color NES buttons. You can do anything. You know, you can just make it your own. I would say that when you're doing this upgrade too, is that if you want to keep it on a budget, I'd say the buttons are less important than the joystick. Uh, replacing that joystick makes a huge difference. Uh, the joystick that they come with, it's fine. It gets the job done. You know, you can play games on it, but it doesn't feel anywhere near as good as a real uh, arcade quality joystick. Whereas the buttons are pretty close actually. They're fine. The buttons are just completely acceptable. I'm going to take this white one out. I do like these white buttons. Uh, the silent buttons. These are the Sanwa Generation 2 silent buttons. The OBSFEs. And I was pretty impressed with them. I'm doing another arcade stick soon for myself, which is going to be more based on fighting games, whereas this is going to be more based on arcade games. Um... Like uh, retro games and stuff like that. Uh, I use it m mostly with my Mister. Although I do use it with my Switch too. Um, that's why I'm kind of hemming and hawing on when, whether I actually want to switch it out to a J to an octagonal gate because I want the octagonal gate for the retro games and stuff. Did I get that on there? Yeah. Um, but. The square gate is definitely better for Street Fighter, and I do play Street Fighter on my Switch. The 30th anniversary collection, and am I still in frame? And the, um, what is it, Ultra Street Fighter 2 that was released on Xbox Live and then also released on the Switch. Originally came out for like the 360, and it's rumored, I don't know if this is confirmed or not, but it's rumored that it's the reason that Street Fighter 4 was made was because it was so popular that Street Fighter 2 revision with uh, redrawn graphics and new netcode and everything. 
And it's a great version of Street Fighter 2, Ultra Street Fighter 2. It's got all the Street Fighter 2 fighters uh, that were in Street, Super Street Fighter 2. Um, it's a great version. You see this? Submit's button came back out. I'm experimenting more with Sumitsu buttons. I like the feel of the button, except that it's a smaller button inside a wider kind of surround. So, let's see here, this part of the button is smaller. This is a thicker surround. And also because the one I ordered is low profile, these tabs are not deep enough to hold it in place. I think it's meant to be in like a metal case. Oh, I've gone and messed up, but I think I'm okay. One of my cables came off the Sumitsu, but it was the ground cable, so I'm fine. If you do mess up with the wiring, it's not a big deal. You'll, you'll figure it out pretty quick when you go plug it back in and one of the buttons is wrong. This goes there, and this goes here. It's really not rocket science. <laughs> Nothing about this is, you know, this is, I think we've really, we've progressed in a, to a world where this kind of thing is pretty simple and easy. Slide those in. All right, this, this button is bugging me. Let me get it out of here. Oops, it's the wrong one. I was gonna say I'm short one button, but it was in a box inside the bag. Let's pull this cable out of here. Snap in our button. All right, last button. I lost the tip off my screwdriver that time. All right, all right guys out. Grab our last button out of our bag here. All right, guys, we're basically done here. Look at those blue buttons. Oh, smack them hard. Smack them so hard that you wake up the parents of the 13-year-old kid who's kicking your ass at Street Fighter. <laughs> that sounds good, too. All right, now we're going to put on our ball. Again, since we put on uh, this quick disconnect. Oh, now you can finally see this quick disconnect in action, too. You can see it goes right on there. Now, I think that this dust cover should just fit right over the disconnect. Perfect. Uh, but you'll be, have to be careful. Oh, actually, it holds it right on there, too. That's nice. So once we put our ball on the lever here, I'm just going to use this to tighten it up so it doesn't move on us. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's going to be fun, guys. That's going to be a lot of fun. All right. So now we got to put this thing together. 
Let me get some zip ties. All right, I just went ahead and got a few zip ties just so we can get this cabling kind of put together. We just want to lock it down. We don't want to get too tight with it so we're putting strain on anything. But it'd be nice to just keep it clear of any buttons or movement inside the joystick. You don't need much more than we got here. Yeah, I'll kind of do that over here a little bit, but geez, that seems pretty good. Put another one over here just to keep it neat. Not bad, right? Cut these ends off. I think we've uh, wrapped this one up. So let's put it back together. We'll get our base here. Connect our USB cable to the base. The same way we disconnected it here. Just look for the tabs, slide it in. Put it in place, and mine's upside down. The USB should be pointing away from you. Let's get our piece of foam, we're gonna flip it over, we're gonna put our screws back on. All right guys, uh, we are basically complete here. Uh, I love these blue buttons, I think they look ultra slick. I love this new ball top, I love the quick release mechanism. Uh, so I can store it or throw it in a backpack without any problems. I don't have to worry about messing up my lever. I can just throw this in a backpack like this and go on the road. You know, to all those fighting game tournaments I'm going to be winning. You know. Uh, I, I just think this thing is ultra cool now. Customizing it just adds a little bit of style uh, and a little bit of ownership to it, right? It's like, I customize this. I made this my own. Uh, it's not just a stock off-the-shelf thing. I think that's really cool. Uh, so hopefully you were able to follow along pretty easily. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, this really, I mean, this is not hard to do. The hardest thing to do is just figuring out uh, which parts uh, that you need to buy to do this. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description to everything you're going to need. Just ask me any questions that you have. Um, I'm not sure about these white buttons. So, uh, tell me about these white buttons. Do you like the white buttons or should I go back to the black buttons? The black buttons kind of tie it in better with this black panel here. I don't know. I'll probably open this thing up another half dozen times before I'm done with it. But I really like the way this turned out. I really like these blue buttons and this blue ball top. And man, you can really feel the difference in this joystick compared to the stock 8-bit do one. I like this joystick the way it comes right out of the box. I think it's a, at an affordable price. The fact that it's wireless, the fact that you can use it wirelessly with the Switch or with this 2.4G version that has like this little dongle uh, with it. The fact that you can use it wired, you can use it with a Mister, you can use it with a Raspberry Pi, you can use it with a PC, you can use it with a Switch. The only thing you can't use it for is a PS5, PS4, Xbox, or Xbox One kind of stuff. Uh, for those, you, you need an adapter of some sort, like a Brook adapter uh, that allows X input to PS5, for instance. Um, but I think this thing is really, it's quite, you know, it's just versatile. There's so much you can do with it. And for me, the main purpose for this is going to be playing like old school arcade games um, on the Mister. You know, the, the Mister comes with those amazing versions of arcade games that uh, I can't wait to. And it does have really good versions of Street Fighter, especially with the CPS2 coming out soon. Um, so we'll be able to play a lot more versions of Street Fighter on the Mister. So maybe I will keep this square gate. I'm not, I'm not positive about the square gate, octagonal gate thing yet. More to be said. You know what I mean? More to be said, man. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.